Today, I'm in Somerset to explore the Newt, a breathtaking country estate that's known for its stunning gardens, meticulously landscaped grounds, vibrant orchards, but also its unique fusion of horticulture and artistry. Set within the Somerset Hills near Castle Carey of Glastonbury fame, its sprawling 300 acres date back to the 17th century. A working farm proud of its cider production heritage. In recent years, heavy investment has transformed the working estate into a year-round visitor destination, offering a feast for the eyes as well as the taste buds. And what makes it extra special is the next generation of talented and passionate horticulturists that work here. It's so inspiring to see the next generation of green-fingered gurus coming through here. And I'm keen to find out how their skills and experience can benefit all of us at home. You bought the sunshine? Good to see you. Great to see you. So you're the head of ornamentals, but you're also known, so Little Bird tells me, as Andy Apples. Why? That's right. Well, um, if you look around you, we're surrounded by apples here, and I've spent a lot of my more recent days looking after the apple collection here. One of our wonderful colleagues here once coined the phrase, and uh, it's kind of stuck. Stuck. Not a bad name to have, though. No, it could be worse. Yes, indeed. Are you going to show me around? I can't wait to, to have a good look. I'd love to. It's down to Andy and his team to preserve not only its 65 acres of heritage apples, but to expand its collection to include new, tastier varieties for both eating and drinking. So all along the side here, you've got so many different apples planted, haven't you? Different names coming. Pig's Nose Pippin. I mean, yeah. <laughs> great names, don't amazing. they? Amazing. There's some amazing names here. All the different varieties. Um, there's some really interesting ones out there. And it's one of the great attractions for our visitors to come across varieties they haven't seen before. And so we're really celebrating the, the Somerset apple here for sure with the, our dessert apple Somerset collection. Our cider orchards are filled with Somerset varieties, but particularly within the walled garden here, our, our national collection celebrates apples by county. Is my county Gloucestershire represented? It certainly is. We, we occasionally do get a, a, a visitor where their county isn't represented. Ooh, yeah. And um, yes, we apologise profusely yeah. for and that. And then you're hunting for an apple from that place. Absolutely, quickly. yes. Yeah. We, we, uh, we try and find one. You're very passionate about your plants. How did it all start for you? So I've always worked within horticulture, within the garden industry from a young age. Always wanted to work outside and I've just spent a lot of time working in various gardens. Uh, lucky enough to spend um, six years in Australia working with fruits and citrus over there. So it really gave me that passion for fruit trees and grow your own, let's say. So the perfect spot to be? Yeah, it's a, it's a great space to be in. Now for people that want to get involved in growing edibles, be that fruit like the apples or vegetables, what are your top tips? Yeah, so whether it's growing fruit or vegetables, grow something that you want to eat. Uh, with something like a trained fruit tree, maybe three or four years before you taste the fruit. So you don't want to spend all that time and not enjoy what you've grown. Make sure it's when you like. Yeah, that's it. And if you want your very own apple tree at home, it couldn't be simpler. All you have to do is plant a healthy young tree in a sunny spot, provide it with regular watering and proper care, and watch as it grows and bears fruit for years to come. Now we've seen how they grow a lot of their own food here on the estate, but they're particularly proud of their exotic mushroom collection. I'm keen to find out how easy they are to grow at home and where better place to start than at the mushroom house. Aha, Sam the mushroom man. Is it okay if I come in? Yeah, come on in. This is incredible. I've never seen so many mushrooms in one place at one time. Yeah, welcome to Thank our fruiting you. chamber. You started off in the catering sort of business, didn't you? I did. Hospitality was my original background. Yeah. Um, I was in London for a long period of time, um, and then I reverted to horticulture about six years ago. And you've kind of, you know, you're, you've come full circle because Absolutely. you're using that knowledge of growing things to eat and doing it here. Yeah, it's that tie back with the chefs, actually. It's really nice for me to almost have that understanding of knowing how chefs like to work and what, what produce they like to use. So just take me through a few of the different types that we have here. Um, we have our oyster. They are probably our most popular amongst our chefs here. Mm -hmm. Great for breakfast, 
What's this one here? This little so, shaggy one. So the shaggy one is uh, a lion's mane, the mushroom that everybody's talking about, especially for its medicinal properties, and it is equally delicious. But presumably people don't need all of this to grow their own mushrooms at home? Most certainly not, no. You merely need a garage, an airing cupboard. You can grow them within your house. So show me what we need to do then. Absolutely. So we have one of our pre-inoculated bags here. Lovely. And what's in it then? OK, so inside of the bag, we have a combination of sawdust and chaff, or wheat husks. I don't have to show. Yeah, um, it's the, the birds spit out. Absolutely. <laughs> the material is then sterilised, um, and then it will be inoculated. OK, with um, whatever mushroom With whatever mushroom spore you want to grow. we sort of choose. And we will just need to make a slit up in the top, and we can just cut... Oh, cut, that was cut. quite a big slit. <laughs> we can cut the corner off there. Just here. There we go. Perfect. Okay. And then from here, what we can do is yeah. essentially allow all of the air here of its high carbon dioxide concentrate yes. out of the Come back. Out. Um, so from this point here, yep. we can fold in the corners. Okay. Um, almost like wrapping a present. Yeah. And we will tuck down. Down. Yes. We then, okay. once we pin the corner down, oh. there we go. And so from here, yep. I, will, I can just turn the bag on its side, mm -hmm. just wrap the whole way around. Okay. There you go. Splendid. Okay. And so now, from this point here, we can essentially just put slits mm -hmm. into these bags. Right. And wherever we put the slit, this is where the fruiting bodies then start to form. I suppose it depends on the type of mushroom you're growing. Absolutely. But how long for your average mushroom, then? To, so to your oysters, for fruiting, you'll be looking in good condition somewhere between 10 to 12 days. Um, lion's manes are slightly more stubborn. They can be sort of two to three weeks. It's exciting. Um, it is incredibly exciting. Yeah. Actually, two weeks is no time at all, is it? It isn't at all. You think no. how long you wait for, say, tomatoes or anything like that yeah. for a whole season. Absolutely. And it's the block will give you several flushes. Yeah. So you'll get your first flush, mm -hmm. and then within a couple of weeks, you'll get your second flush, yeah. and then you generally get a third flush out of your blocks. Oh, that's so so your block can last you anywhere from six to seven weeks yeah. um, until it's essentially spent all the nutrients that are within. That is amazing. And how long do they last when they're like this? How do you know? You've got an expert eye, so you would know this mushroom is, is good to harvest or it's gone too far? Yeah, so what you're looking for, well, especially with your oysters, you're looking for a closed cap. This sort of shape on your mushroom is perfect. Yes. And then with your lion's mane as well, um, you're generally just looking for a particular length on the sort of icicle strain bit that's coming down. Uh -huh. um, and you also want, you want the mushrooms to still be firm. But I think we definitely need to harvest some. Is that OK? Yeah, of course, absolutely. Okay. Let's go. Right. This estate has rich pickings when it comes to talented mines and resources. But what it's taught me is that even in our own gardens, it's perfectly achievable to get on a path to grow your own. Just look at all these fabulous fungi. Thank you so much, Sam. You're most welcome. I think I very well might try some for dinner tonight. Don't worry, Alan, I might save you a couple. <laughs> <laughs>